Hello and welcome. In this video today, we will be taking the first mock test of your NTA Abhyas app, which is a free portal given to everybody. Anybody can access this. So I'll be discussing the first mock test, JEE math paper. Math paper I will be discussing. Yeah. And uh, trust me, this is a very important exercise which we would be doing because close to every day they are uploading one test from the time the app was launched and you have around 56 to 57 tests already with you. So I would recommend each one of you to go through the test in detail, attempt the test and then look at the video. Uh, you will find it better or you can also look at the video and attempt the test on your own. Anyways, fine. So as usual, this is a mains paper, right? So I would first thing I would do is I would classify it into rounds, right? So this looks like a quadratic equation question, simple, looks simple. So I will solve it in round one. This looks like a domain question, wavy curve. Again, a favorite, which we discussed many times. It's a round one. This looks like definite integrals, but you need to know the definition of step x. So for that purpose, what I'm doing is, uh, I'll write it as round one only. This is heights and distances. So probably looks a little uh, lengthy. So I will try to do it in round two. And uh, they're asking us domain again of a function x square plus y square less than or equal to four. So in any equation domain is what they're asking. So probably I will do it in round two. This is a simple remainder based question. So I will again do it in round one. Tangent question, favorite question, seen it many times. So I will do it round one. The number of discontinuities. So whatever are not satisfying, continuous, discontinuous. So I will do it round two. Number of ways of selecting 15 teams from 15 men and 15 women such that a team contains one man and one woman. So probably round two, we might permutations, combinations. So if you find it tricky, keep it as round two. Simple differential equations, round one. Simple inverse trigonometry based, it's round one. Distinct integers divided by, so it is round one, mathematical induction. Area bounded by the curves and they gave a y value. So might be a little tricky guys. So we will take it as round two. Number of roots of the equation which lie in the interval. So they are asking general solutions. So probably I'll take a round two. Sides of the consecutive triangles are three consecutive integers. Again, they are asking a visualization case. So round two. 3 in the units place, tens place, hundreds place with probability, round 2 I am keeping. dy by dx, simple differentiation guys, so uh, you won't have anything in the, to do in this actually, so it's just a simple round 1 question. Uh, least value, maximum value, again this is uh, a part of your complex numbers. Little bit of concept is there, so I will do it in round 2. Arithmetic progression, some guys. It's actually very simple round one. Indefinite integration guys. So again, this is just differentiating option. So I will do round one. All numerical, I told you round two, you keep it. So where did I tell you the strategy? In our mains paper 2020 discussion, right? So now that I know all this, first I will try to solve all the round one questions available to me. Yes, so I'll try to solve all the round one questions. Let's look at the first question. The roots of the equation are in the ratio of m is to n. Then the condition is, this is a direct condition. So basically m is to n uh, is, uh, are the roots which they are saying. So what I will do, say is, I will assume the roots. I will say alpha s2, beta s3. Yep. So what will be quadratic equation? So what are the roots now? Alpha is to beta, right? Roots are in the ratio or basically m is to n. m is to n is given as 2 is to 3, correct? 
So now I will assume the quadratic equation. So if roots are alpha and beta, you know quadratic, you can write it as x square minus alpha plus beta into x plus alpha beta equal to 0. So this I'll write it as x square minus 5x plus 6 equal to 0. Now compare straight comparison ax square plus bx plus c equal to 0. So if you compare the coefficients, I will get a value 1, b value minus 5, c value 6. And I also know m is 2, n is 2 and 3. So m value 2, n value 3. So this is what I will do guys. Now I know everything. Now you can check options, right? You can just verify the options. Let's check the first option, everyone. So first option will be what? m into n into b square. So m into n is 6. b square is 25. So 25 fours are 100, fives are 125, so 150 you are getting LHS. So LHS value you are getting it as 150. Now you have to check the RHS value. So how will we do the RHS? RHS we can solve by taking A into C. A into C is what? 1 into 6 is 6. M plus N whole square into 5. Same thing we are getting, right? 6 into 25 is what we are getting. This is also 6 into 25. LHS, RHS are equal. So it is option A. So first simple question, guys. It's actually a level 1 question. Domain. Now tell me, how do you find out domain? Domain is what you have to identify the types, right? This is under root of x square minus 1. This is exponential term. Inside you have a square root. This is a logarithm term inside. So for square root you know, inside whatever is there, that should be positive or it can be 0. But for logarithm, whatever is inside should be only greater than 0. So basically I can write x square minus 1 can be greater than or equal to 0. And x minus 1 should be greater than 0 basically x square minus 1 greater than or equal to 0 means what? x plus 1 into x minus 1 should be greater than or equal to 0. Here we have x minus 1 greater than 0. Now can I take wavy curve? How will I do the wavy curve method? I will just draw a number line. What are the roots? Minus 1 and 1, right? So minus 1 I will mark, 1 I will mark. Now draw the wavy curve like this. Whatever value is greater than 1, for all values greater than 1, if you substitute 2 or 3 or 4, what am I getting? I will definitely get positive, right? Between minus 1 and 1, right? Between minus 1 and 1, if I take 0, I will get negative for sure. What about the values which are less than minus 1? If you take minus 2, minus 3, this will be negative, negative. Negative into negative will be positive again. But for this, x minus 1 greater than 0, what is the only interval I can take? So for this, I will use a different color. I will use magenta color. For this, let's draw the wavy curves in the same thing. When is it positive? Only here, right? Here and here, it is definitely negative. So if I want to take the final answer, I have to take the common one, right? You have two inequations. So I can take only the common one. The common one is what? Which is should be greater than 0. Both should be greater than 0. Common one is what? 1, 2. This is infinity, right? So my answer will be 1, 2, infinity. Both not included, which is the first option. Very simple question. Now coming to the third question. It's a simple round one question again, guys. Because... Now look at this. This I can write it as minus 1 to 1 x dx minus minus 1 to 1 step x dx. Right? So this is what this is an odd function. Whenever it is an odd function, the value is 0 directly. What about this? Now we are coming to this step function. 
So step function, how do I write? I have to visualize, right? So if you draw it in a number line, I can write minus 1, 0 and 1. Why am I writing in this way? Because all values between minus 1 and 0, they will def definitely be negative, right? I mean, they will definitely become 0, right? Not negative. I beg your pardon, it will be 0. Because you take what will be step of minus 0 0.95. Okay, I beg your pardon. So for this, let's check actually. Let's do the check. Let's do it in the hard way. Between minus 1 and 0, let's check guys. Between minus 1 and 0, what will be the value? Take anything, minus 0 0.5. What is step of minus 0 0.5 guys? That value will be minus 1, right? Similarly, step of minus 0 0.9999, that value will also be minus 1. So any value between minus 1 and 0, the value will definitely be minus 1. What about the values between 0 and 1? If you take step of 0 0.5, step is the greatest integer less than or equal to x, right? Step of 0 0.5 is 0, right? So any value between 0 and 1, you will definitely get 0. So this part, I can write it as, I know from minus 1 to 0, I'm getting it as minus 1. From 0 to 1, I'm getting it as 0, right? So this part is 0 anyways. Minus of, I'm getting what here? Minus 1, minus 0, I'm getting. So minus, minus will get cancelled. We are getting the answer as plus 1. We are getting the answer as plus 1. Very simple, very easy question, guys. This is round 2, so I'm leaving all these. Round 2. Now we'll come to the sixth question, guys. We'll move on to the sixth question. Okay. Now, remainders 5 power 97 divided by 52 is what you're doing, right? Whenever you have remainders, what you can do is you need to first check the power. Power is it greater than whatever you are dividing, right? The denominator. Power is greater, right? So as the power is greater, what I can do is, first I will divide 97 with 52. So 52 ones are 52. Remainder you are getting it as 45, right? So basically I can write 5 power 45 divided by 52. So I can transform it like this, which is your step 1. The next step is, this is 5 power 45, right? 45 means what? It is de de definitely divisible by 3, right? Can I write this as 5 cube whole power 15 whole divided by 52? Correct? So what does it mean basically? I am writing this as 5 cube or uh, yeah, I will write it as 5 cube. 5 cube is what guys know? This is basically 125 whole power 15 whole divided by 52. Now the inside part again you are observing, right? So can I divide 125 with 52 now? So 52 twos are 104. So basically I will get remainder as 21. So basically what I need to do is 21 power 15 whole divided by 52 is what I need. So this is what I need to find out. Reminder of 21 power 15 by 52. So how do I write 21 power 15 now? So again I can write 21 into 21 or into 21. This is one way of doing. Or the other way is after this step, can I write this as 5 power 5 or 5 power 9 whole power 5 or 5 power 5 whole power 9 this also I can do right so what can you do whole divided by 52 5 power 5 is what 5 5 is 25 5 is 125 5 is 625 625 into 5 divided by 52 you will get 625 into 5 whole divided by 52 so this you can find out LCM but again it is getting lengthy so I thought it was round 1 but it was getting a little lengthy so let me shift my strategy now.
I told you right sometimes you might feel it's round one but you will get you might have to do it in round two so this also I'm changing it into round two so this also let me write it as round two now look at this tangent guys tangent simple and straight at point two comma three so a curve is given to you a point is given to you this is the point of contact so this is basically my x1 y1 they're asking p and q so tangent is given right so what is slope of tangent basically slope is given as 4 which is also dy by dx at your points x1 y1 so can you tell me guys what is derivative of this so i'm getting 2y dy by dx as derivative of px cube is 3x square into p derivative of q is 0 anyways so what is dy by dx basically slope of the tangent 3x square p whole divided by 2y now what is your x and y 2 and 3 right so this i can write it as 3 into 2 square is 4 into p whole divided by 2 into y is nothing but 6 3 goes 2 times 2 so basically this value i'm getting 2p right so 2p is 4 p value you know it as 2 so p value 2 means what b and c are eliminated now tell me how will you find out q you know point of contact right point of contact means it's common right so this i can substitute in this 3 square i'm getting 9 equal to p value 2 you know now x cube you know it as 8 plus q so this i can send it to the other side p value what did we get we got it as 8 right p value you get it as 2 2 cube is 8 so this you can send it to the other side so q is 9 minus 16 so i'll get it as minus 7 so 2 comma minus 7 is the answer very simple tangent we are doing a lot this again round 2 this again round 2 i've given this is round 1 what is the formula of sin inverse x plus sin inverse y guys this i can write it as sin inverse of x under root 1 minus y square plus y under root 1 minus x square right so how will i write this now sin inverse x is 1 by 3 under root of 1 minus 2 by 3 whole square plus 2 by 3 under root of 1 minus 1 by 3 whole square so this I can write sine inverse of what is this 3 by 9 so 1 by 3 1 by 3 this will be 9 uh, 9 minus 5 is 5 so root 5 plus you will get what is this again 9 minus 5 is 5 so this will be 4 root 2 by 9 sine inverse sine inverse cancel Laddu question right easy simple straight now look at this x and y are two distinct integers n is a natural number natural number means what i should start with 1 2 and 3 right 1 2 3 4 like that i can take now let's do hit and trial if you substitute one what am i getting x minus y so x minus y is divisible by what guys is it divisible by x square minus y square no is it divisible by x plus y no is it divisible by x minus y yes simple third option even if you put n value 2, I am getting x square minus y square. How will I write it? x plus y into x minus y. What does it mean? This x minus y is a factor again, right? So that is also divisible by this. Easy, again straight, sweet question. Now area bounded round 2. Number of roots round 2. Again 3 consecutive round 2. Now we are coming to round 1. Now tell me guys simple. How will I write log a base b? This I will write it as log x by log 10 I will write. Plus this I will write it as log 10 by log x. This is log x base x will get cancelled. This is a constant right. Log 10 base 10 so this is also 1 1. Now if I want to do dy by dx. What will I get? 1 by log 10 I can take it as it is. Derivative of log x is 1 by x plus log 10 as it is derivative of 1 by log x is minus 1 by log x whole square 
into derivative of log x is what 1 by x this is what you will get guys so first option will be your answer straight let to question again now have a look at 19th question they said a b c d e f are in ap then they are asking e minus c tell me some ap guys i will take uh, 2 5 8 11 uh, 12 13 14 15 16 17 18 19 20 21 22 23 24 so this i can write it as this i can call it as a this i can call it as b this i can call it as c this i will call it as d this is e this is f okay i will take this so common difference is what 3 i am starting with to anything you can take now what is he asking you e minus c is what is being asked e minus c means what this is e this is c so basically they are asking 14 minus 8 which is what 6 now tell me guys first option 2 times c minus a c minus a is what 8 minus 2 is 6 so we are getting 12 is that possible no second option 2 times d minus c d minus c is 11 minus 8 is 3 so are we getting 6 maybe third option 2 times f minus d So seventeen minus eleven six again we are getting twelve not possible d minus c so eleven minus eight that is nothing but three is that correct no second option answer again straight sweet question easy peasy now this one guys simple right what you can do is you can differentiate or you can also write it in uh, the same way. you can either use the actual method or you can differentiate options what you can do is you can differentiate options you will get your question easy way is first option let's differentiate minus half so this i can write 1 this i can write 2 this i can write 3 inside minus half so this will be 2 times log of x plus 1 by x so first one i have differentiated second derivative of log is what 1 by x plus 1 by x derivative of inside part is what i can use shortcut a f of x plus b by c f of x plus d 1 minus 0 i am getting so this would be 1 by x whole square this is what i am getting x and square cancelled guys 2 and 2 cancelled this is like log of a by b i can write log a minus log b or this is minus right or i can take it like this so this i can write it as log of x plus 1 minus log x Whole divided by x into x plus one, which is same as the question, right? So first option derivative is giving you question direct, straight. Let's do again. Now look at this, guys. Now we will come to level two, and as I told you, we will start off with the numeric type of questions. In numeric, also we'll see what are the easy ones. and then we will solve i think this looks easy i'll start with 25th as i have done in the mains paper as well distance from the point to the line guys what does this mean distance from point this means perpendicular distance formula so perpendicular distance from x1 y1 to any equation ax plus by Plus c equals to zero. How can I write that? Mod of a x one plus b y one plus c by under root of a square plus b square. So this, if you simplify, I'll get twelve x minus five y. This is seventy two minus ten. That will be eighty two. So x one y one, you know, minus one minus one. So twelve into minus one. So I will get twelve into minus one mod minus five into one plus eighty two whole divided by under root of twelve square plus five square. So you do it. I think you will get answer as five. You will get. 
Now look at 24th question. A, B, C are in AP. What does that mean? 2B equal to A plus C. Now tell me guys, B 45, right? 2 into 45 is 90 degrees equal to A plus C. So can I give A 60, C as 30 or A 30, C 60. Now check A 30, B 45, C 60, 30, 45, 60. AP, right? So this can be my good assumption. Now tell me what did he ask? Tan A. Tan A is tan 30, 1 by root 3 into tan B. Tan B is tan 45, 1. Tan C. Tan 60 is root 3. Root 3, root 3 cancel. I am getting answer 1. So actually it's round 1. But again, as I told you, numeric, do it always in round 2. It's very easy. The least value of quadratic polynomial f of x equals to for all real values of p and x. This is a little tricky. Okay. The 23rd question is what we are doing now. We are trying to do. So this is a little tricky because you need to first find out delta. Right. You need to first find out the delta. Or you can do hit and trial. So this is p square, right? Now you need least. So you can do logic also. p, how will you get least? This is square, right? Whenever you have x square, least value is what? You can give is 0. So I am giving p value 0. Let's check now. What am I getting? f of x now. This is x square minus 2x plus 2 into minus 1 into x is what I am getting plus 4. Now tell me how will you find out maximum? f dash x is what? 2x minus 2. So x value if it is equal to 0 I am getting x value 1. This method we discussed right? Finding extreme values. So this becomes a maxima minima sum. So what do I do after getting extreme value? Only one extreme value that you put it back here. So what will I get? 1 square is 1 minus 2 plus 4. So 4 minus 2 is 2, 2 plus 1 is nothing but 3. Easy guys. So once you identify that p value 0, right, because that is the least possible value, we get it in form of a quadratic that you can differentiate equal to 0, we will get what the extreme value that you are substituting back to get the final answer. Now they are asking us C and D, right? One thing you can do guys, can I take that A inverse to the other side? What will you get? If you take A inverse to the other side, this will be 1 or identity matrix. 1 by 6 times A square into A inverse, that will be A. Plus C into A into A inverse, that is nothing but I. Anything multiplied by I will be the same, equal to C plus D. Or simply speaking, i minus a by 6 will be c plus d guys. They are asking the same right. They are asking c sum of values of c and d which is c plus d actually. So what is i? 1 0 0 0 1 0 0 0 1 minus this is 1 by 6 0 0 1 by 6 0 0 0 1 by 6, 0, 0, minus 2 by 6 and what do you say, 4 by 6, like this I can do guys, correct or you can take 6 to the other side actually. So I am getting 6i minus this also you can do or other ways you can take 6i, 6 to the other side. So 6i minus a also you can do. Anything else? You do it and find the mod. So mod of 6i minus a you have to do. If you do that, 
I think you will get the answer as 5. Now look at this. This is standard question guys. At what condition? So we are doing the 21st question here of your NTA Abhyas test. So can you tell me which is that standard function guys where f of x into f of 1 by x equal to f of x in plus f of 1 by x. If you remember this we had discussed in our lecture class videos f of x I can write it as plus or minus x power n plus 1. Basically this is what they are giving. Now it is easy right. They are asking you limit extends to 1. So either I can write plus 1 plus 1 or minus 1 plus 1. But they are saying it is greater than 1. So negative case I can't take. Only positive case plus 1 plus 1. So you will get it as 2. <clears throat> easy no guys. So again this is straightforward simple easy. So you see all numeric type of questions here given to you in this paper are pretty easy guys. <clears throat> uh, so I missed this uh, differential equation question. Now look at this guys. This is very simple again. Differential equation. Simple differential equation sum. Tenth question which I was doing. I missed this. Again this sometimes it might happen in the exam. What are you observing? The powers are same right? Y dash means dy by dx. So since the powers are same, it's a homogeneous form. So I can assume y as vx. So dy by dx will be what? v plus x dv by dx. So this part, I can write it as v plus x dv by dx. That is equal to y is nothing but vx by x plus phi of x by this is again vx. xx cancelled. xx cancelled. Right? So V and V will also get cancelled. So X DV by DX X DV by DX is given as Phi of 1 by X. Now you can take it to the other side. So Phi of 1 by V actually. So Phi of 1 by V dv by phi of 1 by v is dx by x. Now you can, uh, what do you say, integrate on both sides and then compare with this. Right? And then you can find out your phi of 2. Right? So it's a little lengthy but you can solve simple homogeneous uh, differential equation. If you are attending, if you have attended my differential equations class, it becomes very simple guys. So now let's come back. First we are done. Second we have done. Now I am coming to the fourth question everyone. Fourth question of your NTA Abhyas mock test 1. Fourth question guys. Now how can you do this? Everyone. So basically simple method is a building is there 25 meters high. So let's draw first. This is 25 meters, right? So this is the floor of the building, let's say. On the top of the building, that is on the top, there is a pole of 5 meters. So this part, he's saying it as 25 meters. This part is saying it as 5 meters. Now what else is given? For an observer at a height of 30 meters, the flagstaff and the building uh, subtend to equal angles. So if you want to check from here to here, or you are checking from here to here, it is subtending equal angles. So this is alpha, this is also alpha. Total will be 2 alpha. And obviously since the building is a vertical thing. So this is 90 degrees. Distance between the observer to the top of the flagstaff. Right. Top of the flagstaff. So this part I need to find out. So I can use simple trigonometry. Right guys. So I can say tan alpha is 
so if i take this now right so this part actually if you take this okay otherwise let's draw it uh, in the reverse way okay let's see if we can draw it in the reverse way let's do it in the reverse way actually so what i will say is this is a this is b 25 meter and 5 meter as usual so this is 25 this is 5 i will call it as a b and c okay for an observer at a height of 30 meters the flag stuff and this right so what i'm say doing is at a height of 30 meters so let us say the observer is like this here correct now observe from here to here what they are saying is now you can draw extend the line like this now what he is saying is from here to here right from here to here and from here to here i will extend this is where that observer is right from here to here here to here right so this also 30 meters basically every calculation is the same these two are same actually so this part what i will do is i will call it uh, i these are this is my unknown so i will call this x this i will call it alpha this also i will call it alpha so this is the building again this looks like i am just mimicking this a b and c right so basically they are asking us x the observer is like this here right they are asking the height to the top of the building right so i've just reverse visualized now tell me guys this will be like 90 degrees so what will be tan alpha basically tan alpha can i write this as this is 5 meters right this is 5 by x right 5 by x what about tan 2 alpha that is this complete angle this will be 5 plus 25 right 30 so that i can write it as 30 by x now you know tan 2 alpha formula what is tan 2 alpha formula 2 tan alpha by 1 minus tan square alpha that is 30 by x given now what else you know you know this formula right you know tan alpha formula i mean value given 5 by x wherever tan alpha substitute 5 by x so 2 into 5 by x whole divided by 1 minus 5 by x whole square that is equal to 30 by x simplify you will get b option so little lengthy you saw that is why we did it in round 2 now let's look at the fifth question guys so we are doing maths paper we are doing the fifth question now tell me x and y such that x and y belongs to integers okay such that x square plus y square should be less than 4 right it should be less than 4 then the domain of uh, r is domain means what simply i can check right now check if it is 0 1 and 2 what is happening i can take 0 square plus 0 square that will be less than 4 Zero square, one square. So all these are satisfying. What about zero minus one and two? Minus one whole square, one. One square, one. So you can choose anything. This you can take x y. This you can take x y. This you can take x y. So these two are satisfying. But look at this. This is having both these. And is this satisfying? If I take minus two, minus two whole square is four. Then I can take a zero, right? Zero. Any two I can pick from this. so that's why c is the answer so actually to understand this it will take some time that is why i have done it in round 2
technically if you understand this so this is a set right we need what x and y that means from this you are choosing any x and y you can take it two times you can take it one time you can not take it and take the other two any case you can take right as long as it should be less than or equal to 4 so now let's do this actually this is our sixth question of your NTA Abhyas test okay now what I can do is here this one 5 power 97 right 5 power 97 whole divided by 52 let's see if I can do it in any other way can I write it as 5 power 4 4 twos are 8 and uh, 4 twos are 8 right 17 means 4 fours are so 24 you will get 5 power 4 whole power 24 into 1 5 so look at this 24 into 4 is 96 into 1 divided by 52 divided by 52 now you have two terms basically right so 5 divided by 52 you know it's perfect remainder is what 5 only here now what about this 5 power 4 is what that is 625 whole power 4 divided by 52 now I have to check 625 divided by 52 625 divided by 52 check guys 52 ones are 52 so 10 and 5 you are getting 52 twos are 104 so remainder what are we getting here we are getting 1 so remainder of this whole thing is 1 power 4 by 52 this is 1 remainder of this is 5 1 into 5 is 5. So actually this was round 1 only. But when I tried doing with uh, you know it was getting complicated. So simply what I have done is I have written in terms of power 4. I got it easy. So whenever you are doing reminders few things you have to remember guys. Either you can find remainder of the power. Either you can find remainder of the power. Or you can find remainder of whatever is inside the base. So base basically I am trying to get it into a form which I know. Which is 625 I know. It is very easy to find out also. So when I get this. When I divide the base. I mean I can neglect the power now. Right. So the base I am getting remainder 1. So it will basically be 1 power 4 divided by 52. So 1 divided by 52 remainder is 1 only. Here 5 divided by 52 the remainder is 5 only. So basically if I say 5 power 4 divided by 4, how do you write this actually? 5 power 4 means what? I can write 5 into 5 into 5 into 5 whole divided by 4, right? So each one I can divide by 4. 5 divided by 4 LCM is 1, 1, remainder 1, 1, 1. So 1 into 1 into 1 is 1 only. So it's a simple example of that. Now look at this guys, the number of discontinuities, the number of discontinuities for uh, you know, this is the eighth question which we are doing, the number of discontinuities for the greatest integer function, right, between minus 7 by 2 and 100, minus 7 by 2 is what guys, this is minus 3.5 right approximately, let's draw the number right. So this is minus 3. So minus 3.5 will lie somewhere here. So you will get minus 2, minus 1 and you will get up to 100 right. So 99 and 100. This is what is given to you and of course you will have infinity. This is minus infinity. This is the number line. Now you are expected to count right. The greatest integer is discontinuous on what? Integral values right. Discontinuous means what? You are getting the same. Now observe, count the number of integers. Count the number of integers. How do I count? So basically you need to check, right? Greatest integral value integer means what? Discontinuity is integers only. So how do I count? Minus 3 by 2. Minus 3, I can take. 200. So how many total? Minus 3, minus 2, minus 1, 1, 200. So these are 3. And these are 100 so answer will be 100 plus 3 103 
So greatest integer function means you need to get the integer values, right? You need the integer values. So every integer value, it's a discontinuity. Discontinuous means what? You know, right? Step function looks like this. That means what? With From 0 to 1, at 1 it is discontinuous. At 1 it is changing C. Again, at 2 it is changing. At 3 it is changing and so on. Now look at this very interesting question. The ninth question of your uh, NTA Abhyas paper mock test 1. Now can you tell me guys, the number of ways in which selecting 15 teams from 15 men and 15 women such that each team consists of a man and a woman. So how can you select the first team guys? Any one, right? So I can say 15C1, one woman, one man, right? Into 15C1, correct? Yes, that is the first possible way which I can write, correct? Yeah. Now, the second possibility is what? This is one way of selecting. Next is what? Out of 15, you have selected one. So, remaining are what? 14, right? So, I will get what? 14C1 into 14C1. Like that, up to so on, I will get. So, basically, what am I getting here, guys? 15 into 14 into 14 into 13 into 1. Like that, up to 1 I am getting. So if you multiply this, this is 15 factorial for you. If you multiply this, this will again be 15 factorial for you. Now how many teams do we need, right? How many teams do we need, right? We need how many teams basically? We need 15 teams, right? So again, those can be arranged in how many 15 factorial ways? 15 factorial, 15 factorial cancelled. So, I can get it as 15 factorial ways. Or you can also use the tabular method which I discussed, right? So, 15 men, 15 women. You can do use basic definition of combinations also and so on. This is what I am getting, guys. So, men, women. Again, men and women. Women and men also I can take. So, I am dividing by 15 factorial. 15 factorial, 15 factorial cancelled. So I am getting the answer as 15 factorial. Now look at this guys. 13th question, area question guys. So area question basically. So this actually you need to visualize and solve. It's little lengthy actually. But one way you can do is uh, at y equal to 1 by 4 they asked right. So y equal to 1 by 4 means what? I can say x minus 1 whole square is 1 by 4. x plus 1 whole square is 1 by 4. So if I solve x minus 1, I am getting plus or minus half. x plus 1 also I am getting plus or minus half. Square root, right? So what are the possibilities? x is 1 by uh, 3 by 2. x is half. You are either getting half or 3 by 2. Here what am I getting guys? Here I am getting minus 1 minus 1 by 2 is minus 3 by 2. And 1 minus, uh, minus 1 plus half is minus half I am getting. Right? So now what else? This is like x minus 1 whole square, right? And this is like x plus 1 whole square. So these are two parabolas basically, right? So it will something, it will look like this actually. Like this and like this, something of this sort it will look like. What is point of intersection? You can equate these two, right? So I'm getting x minus 1 equal to x plus 1. So you are getting point of intersection. What is the point of intersection? At y equal to 4, he said. So at y equal to 4, this should be your point of intersection basically. So tell me guys, so what will you get? Uh, minus 1 minus half. So uh, so I can write it as half 1 by 4, half 1 by 4. Or uh, so you can find out these points of intersection guys. So this part, this part, this part, this part. So it's getting very lengthy actually. 
so i will do round 3 or i will leave it i'll see if we get time we'll do it again so it looks very complicated now tell me guys 14th question how will you solve the roots of the equation they have asked so how will you find out roots of the equation guys i can uh, just you know simplify this so this i have to do simple simplification how will you simplify cos square i can write it as 1 minus sin square plus root 3 plus 1 by 2 sin x minus root 3 by 4 minus 1 cancel equal to 0 i am getting so you can simplify this this is like a quadratic so you'll get sin x as something like minus b plus or minus under root of b square minus 4ac by 2a so you are getting two values right and you need to count so you'll get 4 actually so i think if you simplify you will either get sin x as 1 by 2 you will get or you will get it as so this is like a quadratic right so uh, sin x i will take it as x so x is minus b plus or minus so either you will get 1 by root 2 1 by 2 or root 3 by 2 so you will get two values for this two values for this right because sin is positive in first quadrant as well as second so two values for this two values for this total you will get four values so your simplification you do it please now suppose the sides of the triangle are three consecutive integers okay and one of the angle is twice of the other then the number of such triangles is so basically what did he say so this is again uh, very lengthy you can either do it by hit and trial or actually this is very lengthy guys so you need to use sides formula so i will call sides as a b c so sides are consecutive integers right so i will call this as a a plus 1 a plus 2. these are my sides now angles what is he saying one of the angles is twice of the other right so what i will say is angles if i call it as capital a capital b capital c can i say b is two times of a or c also you can take two times of a, anything i am taking b as a two times of a now they are asking number of such triangles so if you apply cos on both sides i will get cos b equal to cos 2a how will you write cos 2a 2 cos square a minus 1 this is cos b basically how do you write cos b c square plus a square minus b square by 2ac this is two times cos square a how do you write now cos square a is b square plus c square minus a square by 2bc i am writing minus 1 you know abc now substitute simplify you will get some equation of a now you have to check how many values of a are possible so the number of possible values of a will give us the final answer so if it is only one possible value then you will get only one answer how do you know whether it is possible or not you know that side should always be positive only so if you simplify this quadratic again you are getting a quadratic that if you simplify you will only get one possibility so one triangle now look at this x is 33 power n and n is a positive integral value the probability that x will have 3 in units place now observe 33 power 1 if you do what will you get it will be 33 only right so units and tens hundreds thousands and so on units will be 3 only so if it is power 1 units digit is 3 so i'll write units digit here 33 square 33 into 33 if you do what will happen 3 into 3 9 units digit will be 9 33 whole cube will again be 3 again 9 so that means what after every two after every two it is getting repeated right it is following a cycle so this i can say it is following a cyclicity of two okay so how many positive integers are there guys we have how many positive integers we have 
so what is he asking you they are asking us property which is what want by total right so property is what want by total n is positive integral value we are doing so actually we'll have three at its units place n is a positive integer value hmm 33 power 1 will be 33 only 33 square will be 33 into 33 so it will be 9 only right so you will get 3 9 3 9 3 9 like that and so on possibilities so you just need to count right so you will only get 3 and 9 for all positive integers what are the positive integers 1 2 3 4 like that and so on so how many cases i can do so probability that x will have 3 in units place so probability i can write it as whatever cases we want by total number of cases so uh units tens hundreds now if you do 33 square so how many different numbers you will get i think unique numbers you will only get 4 i think and whatever we want we want only in those four cases we want only the ones with three ending but i think it should be 1 by 2 actually i think because there are only two cases unit digit comes only in one case so i think 1 by 2 should be the answer guys so we will check it actually so i'll keep it to round 3 we will check it i will get back to you on this but i as far as I, my understanding it should be 1 by 3 because only two possibility units place what are the possibilities only two possibilities what are those two possibilities either it can end with 3 or it can end with 9 so we want what we want ending with 3 ending with 3 only one case out of the two cases only two possibilities one out of the two possibilities that's it so i think it should be 1 by 2 now this one guys this is a uh, what do you say a complex number based question very simple again z plus 1 by z they have asked so you know inequality mod of z1 plus z2 i can write it as greater than or equal to mod z1 minus mod z so z plus 1 by z can i write it as z minus of minus 1 by z so this one i can call it as greater than or equal to mod of mod z minus mod of minus 1 by mod z correct so this i can call it as so this will be 3 1 by z will be what 1 by 3 3 into 3 is 9 minus 1 by 3 8 by 3 c option is the answer that's it guys so only a couple of ambiguous only one ambiguous question which is that 33 power n which i think should be option 2 rest of it so in this analysis 24 out of 25 questions you can solve guys so i can do 24 out of 25 questions okay so i want all of you to go back to the paper solve and get back to me if you have any doubts any doubts you can put a comment below thank you guys